Submarines haunt the dreams of sailors around the world. Secretive, stealthy, and able to strike from out of nowhere, they remain the greatest threat to surface ships. Thankfully, submarines are limited in just how fast they can move, typically with a top speed of 29 miles per hour, which is well short of a typical destroyer's top speed of 40 miles per hour. Lagging behind their potential prey, submarines must typically intercept their targets or lurk in sea lanes and wait for an enemy to stumble into them. But what if subs could move much, much faster than they currently do? Hello and welcome to another episode of the Infographics Show. Today we're taking a look at supersonic submarines, the US Navy's new super weapon. Moving underwater can be more difficult and energy intensive than cruising along the surface, thanks to the huge amount of drag that water exerts on a vessel, and denser water a submarine encounters the deeper it dives. Thus, while speedboats can zip along the surface of the ocean at speeds of up to 90 miles per hour, anything traveling beneath the waves must exert exponentially larger amounts of energy to move as fast, something traditional submarines are incapable of doing. Yet, in June of this year, it was revealed that Chinese hackers had stolen sensitive data from a US contractor that had been working on a top-secret program to develop a supersonic missile to be launched from a submarine. While the data was only sensitive in nature and not classified, it did hint at a major avenue of research the US was undertaking, and hinted that the US Navy was not just interested in supersonic missiles, but supersonic submarines as well. For US-China observers, though, the revelation was no surprise, as in 2014 China had made claims of huge technological breakthroughs in developing their own supersonic submarines. But just how can you move a submarine through the water at supersonic speeds without huge amounts of energy or absolutely destroying the ship in the first place? Let's take a look at both the US and China's approach to the problem. The US proposal involves doing something called supercavitation, a technology that the Soviet Union developed in the 1960s for superfast torpedoes. The Soviet approach to moving a torpedo at hundreds of kilometers an hour was to add a special segment to the nose cone of a torpedo filled with pressurized gas. That gas in turn is ejected at extremely high pressures and creates a bubble around the torpedo. A rocket motor rather than a traditional propeller then pushes the torpedo along, and since it's avoiding drag from the water, the torpedo could reach incredible speeds. The design was a success, but because of the need to maintain a gas bubble, the range of the torpedo was only a few miles. By scaling the technique up dramatically, the US hopes to cocoon an entire submarine in a gas bubble, and then use the powerful rocket rocket motors to blast across the ocean at speeds faster than sound. The physics involved showed that the concept could work, and already does at smaller torpedo scales. Yet so far, the US has been unable to overcome several obstacles, one of those being the difficulty in maintaining the integrity of a large enough bubble around the submarine and keeping it from pulsating dangerously. During current smaller scale tests, the bubble tended to expand and contract to such extremes that parts of the submarine model made frequent contact with water. At extreme speeds, that would be disastrous and could rip a submarine apart, or at the very least create so much friction that the submarine would go wildly off course. To overcome the problem, scientists are experimenting with moderating the rate of gas release at the tip of the submarine. China's approach to the problem uses traditional supercavitation techniques, with a new technique that involves spraying a special liquid membrane onto the vessel's hull to reduce its friction with the water. The vessel would gradually speed up with this membrane being constantly sprayed on it as it was worn away. Once hitting about 62 miles per hour, an air bubble could be formed and maintained. China's solution would entail the use of a synthetic lubricant of sorts to help a vessel slip through the water. It also provides a possible fix to one of the biggest practical challenges facing supercavitating vessels. How do you steer it? Moving at such incredible speeds, if you were to extend a fin or control surface into the water, it would be immediately snapped off, and the force exerted might throw your submarine into a spin which would lead to disaster. Yet by moderating the flow of their liquid membrane, the Chinese could ensure that one side of the submarine's bubble experiences slightly more drag than the other, which would allow a sub to turn, dive, or rise as it sped along at the speed of sound. If it truly works, it would be an elegant solution to one of the biggest practical hurdles facing this entire concept. Yet a supersonic submarine would not make for a very good offensive weapon, as submarines are in fact extremely vulnerable assets whose best defense is stealth. 
A submarine crossing the ocean at supersonic speeds may be able to get from San Francisco to Shanghai in 100 minutes, but it will generate so much noise that even a deaf sailor would hear it. That would make a supersonic sub extremely easy prey for surface anti-submarine ships or other hostile attack subs. That's why the technology will likely not be used for offensive purposes, but rather for logistical ones. Supersonic subs that could cross the Pacific in just over an hour would be ideal for quickly moving personnel and resources to conflict areas and would be incredibly appealing for the US which faces the prospect of coming to the aid of its NATO allies in Europe in case of war against Russia. For decades, Russia has counted on the fact that in the case of war, it might be able to force a ceasefire favorable to its interests by quickly overwhelming European defenders and then digging in before the bulk of US forces could arrive weeks later from America. Faced with the prospect of a difficult war against an entrenched enemy and the massive civilian casualties it would cause, NATO might be more inclined to simply acquiesce to part of Russia's demands rather than wage a very costly war. Yet a supersonic underwater transport vehicle could change all of that by giving the US the ability to move large amounts of personnel and equipment across the Atlantic in a matter of hours. That would make a US buildup possible in days rather than the weeks it would currently take to ship American attack helicopters and armor across the ocean. Such a fast transport system would also give US leaders a capability they have dreamt of for decades, the ability to put boots on the ground nearly anywhere in the world within hours. As one US military officer once noted, the ability to place a company of US infantry anywhere in the world within a few hours would stop a lot of wars before they started. Supersonic submarines could be revolutionary tools for any nation's navy, yet the technical challenges are formidable and it's unlikely that they'll be overcome anytime soon. Some worry that pilfering of US secrets by China may erode the US's military edge over its potential adversary, but the continued theft of low-level secrets by Chinese hackers merely points at a culture that is more adept at trying to steal revolutionary new technologies than to invent its own, something that would be of serious concern for Chinese military planners. Would you ever take a ride on a supersonic sub? What other military uses might a supersonic submarine have? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, How Deep Can Submarines Go? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.